Good day, future RMDs. Welcome to the discussion about hemoflagellates. Our learning outcomes is as follows. Number one is to recall the morphology, life cycle, pathogenesis, epidemiology of hemoflagellates and distinguish the diagnostic features of each hemoflagellates. Hemoflagellates is a protozoan parasite which is considered as a tissue and blood protozoans. Okay? And these blood and tissue species of protozoans includes Leishmania brasiliensis complex, Leishmania donovani complex, Leishmania mexicana complex, Leishmania tropica complex, Trypanosoma brucei gambiense, Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense, Trypanosoma cruzi, and Trypanosoma rangeli. Remember guys that this blood and tissue uh, blood and tissue protozoans is classified or divided into two genus such as the Leishmania and the Trypanosoma. Now, when we said hemoflagellates, these are a single-celled parasite that moves by the means of tail-like projection and that is the flagella. Okay? Hemoflagellates, as we said a while ago, resides in the blood and in the tissue of its host. There is what we call a uh, blepharoplast. Okay? Blepharoplast is a basal structure that is located on the cytoplasm of the hemoflagellates. We also have what we call the kinetoplast. When we said kinetoplast, this is uh, referring to the blepharoplast and the small parabasal bodies located in the cytoplasm of the hemoflagellates. We have what we call parasitemias. Parasitemia is the presence of the parasite in the blood or the parasite infection in the blood. As we said, hemoflagellates are blood and tissue protozoans. Morphological form of our hemoflagellates differ from the other protozoans. Why? Because there are four morphological forms of hemoflagellates, which includes a mastigote, promastigote, epimastigote, and tripomastigote. To start with, let's discuss what is a amastigote. Amastigote is different from all from the four morphological forms of the hemoflagellates in terms of its shape. Most of the uh, hemoflagellates morphological form or promastigote, epimastigote, and tripomastigote is in cylindrical or long and slender. While for our amastigote, this is the, the only morphological form of hemoflagellates that is in oval or rounded. Usually it is equipped with one nucleus, which is uh, usually off the center. So malapit lang siya sa mga peripheral. No? And there is also what we call the kinetoplast. Kinetoplast is present consisting of the parabasal body, no? consisting of the parabasal body and of, of course, our blepharoplast. This is the axoneme or the axoneme of our blepharoplast. As you can see in this illustration, this tiny circular object is our amastigote. And the large circular structure that uh, with darker color is the nucleus. On the other hand, we have the promastigote, which is the second morphological form, which is somehow long, long and slender. No? And the nucleus is located near the center. Okay. Again, there is also kinetoplast, and of course, it is consists of parabasal bodies and bleparoplast. As you can see, in a mastigot, it's a circular motion, a circular object or a rounded object with no flagella. While for promastigot, no, this is a long and slender with the presence of flagella that allows our hemoflagellates to move. Moving forward, we have the epimastigote, which is the third morphological form of the parasite, which is somehow 9 to 5 micrometers long, long again, and slightly wider than our promastigote. The nucleus is located posteriorly, okay, 
and there is only one nucleus. Again, there is the presence of kinetoplast and there is also undulating membrane that extends half to the body. If we are going to the contrast from mastigote from epimastigote, they are they are usually or they look the same. No, they are almost the same. However, one of the major difference between epimastigote and uh, and from mastigote is the presence of their undulating membrane. Okay, and last but not the least is the tripomastigote. Okay, which is sometimes S shape, C shape, or a uh, U-shape that is seen in the blood stain. No? Uh, there is also a uh, nucleus that is located anterior to the kinetoplast. Okay? And there's also undulating membrane that is extending full of the body. Now, the undulating membrane of tripomastigote is full of the body, while epimastigote is just half of its body. All right, so remember guys that amastigotes is usually seen in the CNS, in the muscle, and in the tissue samples. And amastigote is the diagnostic sample or diagnostic stage of Leishmania species. On the other hand, we have our promastigote that is seen in the blood samples if collected immediately after the transmission. That's why it is rarely to see promastigotes in a clinical sample, okay? Because uh, it is easily, uh, uh, it, it is just present no, in the blood sample immediately after the transmission. Okay. Now, epimastigote, on the other hand, is the morphological form of hemoflagellates that can be found on the arthropods. And lastly, we have the tripomastigotes that can be seen in the peripheral blood smear. It is nice to know that tripomastigote is a diagnostic stage of our Trypanosoma. Now, moving forward, since these are blood and tissue nematodes, these are the samples that we can use. Okay. Remember, guys, that the sample of choice for the specimen or for the sample of choice uh, for the diagnosis of hemoflagellates varies among its species. But uh, for the purpose of this discussion, these are the most commonly used clinical samples or specimen of choice for our for the detection of hemoflagellates. We have the peripheral blood smear. In this case, we have to need a no, uh, stained smear of our blood smear, or we can also use uh, fresh blood. The, the purpose of fresh blood is to see the motility no, of our uh, hemoflagellates. Okay? Lymph nodes and ulcer, ulcer aspirations can also be used. Tissue biopsy, bone marrow, and even CSF. There are uh, available serological and molecular methods for the detection of our hemoflagellates. Now, the traditional methods of uh, detecting hemoflagellates consist the use of gem-sustained blood smear. No? The traditional use, uh, the traditional diagnosis used uh, gem-sustained blood smear or gem sustained tissue samples okay followed by microscopic examination take note under oio okay take note it's under oio now what are the pathogenesis and the clinical symptoms manifested by a patient with trypanosoma and leishmania infection or trypanosomiasis or leishmaniasis. There is a, what we call the small red papule at the bite at the at, at the bite site. Remember, guys, that hemoflagellates such as leishmania and trypanosoma requires vector. No? Of all the parasites that we have discussed in the past semester, uh, in the past period, no, these are the parasites. Ito pa lang yung parasite na nagre require ng vector. And since this vector is important in the transmission of the Life uh, in the transmission of the parasites. No, it is an, also important to note that this vector is a essential part, as an essential, uh, an essential part of the life cycle of these hemoflagellates. Okay, that's why there is a red, a uh, papule at the bite of site or the site of bite. 
Intense itching in connection to the bite of sight, secondary bacterial infections, fever, diarrhea, renal involvement, mental retardation, comatose state, death, and even initial skin lesions, which can lead into spontaneous healing or remain dormant for months or years. What do we mean by spontaneous healing? Gumagaling po siya. And then sa dormant for uh, months or years, mawawala pero bumabalik po siya. Now, if you still remember, like what I've said, uh, hemoflagellates infection such as leishmaniasis and trypanosomiasis is typically a condition including or affecting the blood and the tissues. But, no? but uh, it can also lead into a diarrhea. Okay? So again, these are the classifications of hemoflagellates. No? They are leishmania and they are trypanosoma. Leishmania brasiliensis complex, Leishmania donovani complex, Leishmania mexicana complex, Leishmania tropica complex. We also have uh, Trypanosoma brucei gambiense, no? Trypanosoma brucei rodriense, rodriense, Trypanosoma cruzi, and Trypanosoma rangeli. Now, let's discuss what is Leishmania species. Leishmania species is, historically speaking, the depiction of Leishmania was can be traced back to the first century after that on the pottery from Ecuador and Peru. Leishmaniasis is a general term describing the disease associated to a patient with an infection in the genus Leishmania. Okay. Uh, increased travel and exposure to different paras, uh, different environments were in uh, these conditions are prevalent, no, is uh, at risk, no, into what we call parasitemias. Okay, so disease associated with Leishmania are as follows. We have the Baghdad boils. Baghdad boils is an, an infection caused by Leishmania tropica, which is also known as the cutaneous Leishmaniasis presenting with pus. Pus is WBC. Basor is a cutaneous leishmaniasis caused by leishmania tropica. Now, this is this is what I'm always keep on telling to my students every time that I am teaching basor. Basor is caused by leishmania tropica. If you are going to take a look with the geography no, of Mexico, no, medyo malapit siya sa dagat, so bay, meron tayong tinatawag na Mexican bay. So, yun, para basor, Mexicana. Okay. Chilero ulcer, uh, this is another another technique or mnemonic that I am giving to my students that because chilero parang chili malapit sa Mexico caused also by uh, Leishmania Mexicana. Okay. Uh, the letter M here should be small letter. Next on the other hand, we have your dum dum fever. This is a visceral Leishmaniasis caused by Leishmania donovani. So, madaling intindihin, madaling tandaan, dum-dum, donovani. On the other hand, we have your spunia, which is a cutaneous Leishmaniasis caused by Leishmania brasiliensis. No? Take note, guys, that this is the principal cause of mucocutaneous disease in Central and South America. Forestios is an infection uh, caused by Leishmania goyonensis. This is also known as the PN boys. Okay, so we have Kalazar, the most severe form of Leishmania, uh, visceral Leishmaniasis that is caused by Leishmania donovani. Oriental sore naman is caused by Leishmania tropica. No? And Utah is a mucocutaneous Leishmaniasis in Peruvian Andes. Now, let's discuss Leishmania brasiliensis complex. But before that, have you wondered why there is a word complex? What, the, what does it mean? What does the word complex uh, indicate? No? The word complex indicates that there are subspecies of our Leishmania brasiliensis. There are Leishmania brasiliensis, brasiliensis, Leishmania brasiliensis, Panamenensis, Leishmania brasiliensis, Peruviana, and Leishmania brasiliensis, 
Guyanensis. Or we can only say, or we can simply say it as Leishmania Brasiliensis, Leishmania Panamensis, Leishmania Peruviana, and Leishmania Guyanensis. And here in the table, we have the geographic distribution where these parasites are dominant. Take note, guys, that as, well, as I like what I've said a while ago, this parasite requires vector. And the vector for our Leishmania brasiliensis complex includes the uh, Ludzomia and Sedophagus, Psychodophagus, sandflies. Or we can say sandflies, but if you are asked to give the specific genus of the vector, that will be Ludzomia and Psychodophagus. Okay. The rest of the host of Leishmania brasiliensis complex includes dogs and forest rodents for all species comprising this Leishmania brasiliensis complex. Now, what is the laboratory diagnosis for Leishmania brasiliensis complex? Remember that the specimen of choice is the recovery of a mastigote. Take note, like what I've said a while ago, a mastigote is the morphological form of uh, hemoflagellates that is the diagnostic stage for our Leishmania species. Okay, a gem sustained smear or biopsy of our tissue sample no, is recommended, or the ulcer or biopsy no, is recommended for the demonstration of our amastigote. Now, remember, guys, that promastigote can be seen also. However, this can only be but this can only be possible if the promastigote or if the blood sample was collected immediately no to detect the presence of the parasite but if we are going to culture the sample no using nnn nnn is a culture media nnn yeah nnn a triple n no that is a culture media used for the demonstration of the promastigote of our hemoflagellates. When we said NNN, if you have read the book, NNN stands for Novi, Nicole, no, no, MacNeil Nicole Novi. Oh, no, 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 Novi MacNeil Nicole, I'm sorry. Novi MacNeil Nicole agar, which is a specialized agar for the demonstration of your promastigote. Serological test is also possible for the detection of our Leishmania brasiliensis complex. Like what I've said, this requires a vector. The vector are Lutzomia and Psychotophagus. The mode of transmission of this parasite because it requires a vector, no, a mechanical vector, no, 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 a biologic vector, no, a biologic vector because this vector is an essential part of the life cycle. No? This is the way, how are we going to acquire it? Through the bite of sandfly, or sandfly, or fly rather, sandfly blood meal that injects parasite into the humans. Remember that the promastigote is the infective stage to human. Okay? Now, this is the life cycle which I want you to listen very well. Because this is important for you in order for you to uh, understand why we have this type of condition. Again, this condition occurs when there is an ingestion or uh, ingestion during blood meal. The Ludzomia and Psychodophagus sandflies will do a in, will do a insect bite. But if you if you will observe, there are two insect bites here, one and two. Definitely. No, this ingestion from uh, this ingestion during blood meal. Ano yung, ano yung unang mangyayari? A master goat transform to back to promastigote. Okay, take note of this, guys. Once that this sandfly do a ingestion or nagkameron sila ng blood meal from an infected individual, take note from an infected individual, they will get no. A mastigote. No, they will get a mastigote. Then once that these are in the body, no, it will go back into promastigote. Okay, and then the promastigote will multiply in the in the vector, 
and then migrate into the salivary gland of the fly. In the salivary gland of the fly, the promastigote will be ingested into another human. Kumbaga, itong taong ito, okay, this is infected. And this Ludzumia and Psychodophagus, nag-blood meal sila dyan, or amaalin sa kanila, nag-blood meal dyan. At itong process na ito, nangyari sa vector natin. Okay. After the active multiplication of promastigote, it will go back to the salivary gland of our, no, this is the salivary, salivary gland of our insect. Now, the promastigote will be injected to a another host. Sabihin natin that this host is the healthy one. No? What? Mas pwede ng healthy. Yan. The healthy one. From infected, no? From infected person, this vector, this vector such as Ludzomia and Psychodophagus transport the parasite, transport the promastigote to the another host. Ingesting the promastigote to this host, therefore, this promastigote will invade the reticuloendothelial cells that can cause destruction. Reproduction and invasion of the other cells is possible until such time that there is a, that the skin is being infected. Like what I've said as a while ago, uh, Leishmania brasiliensis complex, diba? Yes. The causative agent of what we call mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. And this is a condition ng mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis or leishmaniasis is a large ulcer of the nasal mucosa, as you can see in the illustration. Okay? Ganan po yung itsura ng pasyente na mayroong mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Now, before we move on, let's nice it is nice to uh, define, okay? What is a mucocutaneous? Mucocutaneous is a condition wherein it is a characterized no, of consisting destruction of the oropharyngeal area consisting of the nose resulting to my uh Ito, mid facial destruction like what is illustrated in the screen okay it can result into a permanent disfigurement of the face which may involve the destruction of the nasal septum and affected areas are lips nose and other soft parts of the muscle as, I, as you as you observe no realize I'm thinking of it from a simple from a simple insect bite. Ganito po yung nangyari. Since there is a tissue destruction and there are open wounds, it is prone to what we call secondary bacterial infection and can lead into bacteremia that can cause death. Treatment for mucocutaneous leishmaniasis is uh, giving a drug containing antimony compounds. Alternative medications such as liposomal amphotericin B or ambisome and anti or oral antifungal drugs such as fuconazole, keto, uh, ketoconazole, and itraconazole are useful. Remember guys that these are Kapag ang gamot nagtatapos sa zole, these are antifungal drugs. Now remember that since this is, these are transmitted by circulating flies and cockroach, now it is important to use uh, ito, it is important to use insect repellents no? to eliminate the possibility of having mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. 
Prevention and control will, of course, include the public awareness, protection against sandfly, and prompt treatment. On the other hand, we have your Leishmania Donovani complex. So, balikan natin, si Brasiliensis, siya yung ano, mucocutaneous Leishmaniasis. Si Donovani, Leishmania Donovani complex is the causative agent of what we call visceral Leishmaniasis or also, or, or another disease is the new world or old world Leishmaniasis. There are three uh, subspecies of Donovani. Those are Leishmania Donovani Shagasi, Leishmania Donovani Donovani, and Leishmania Donovani Infantum. Okay? Leishmania Donovani Shagasi is different from Donovani Donovani and Donovani Infantum in terms of its vector. If you will observe, no, almost similar ang vector ni Leishmania Donovani Shagasi to the Brasiliensis, which is Lutsumia sandfly. The vectors of Brasiliensis includes Lutsumia sandfly and Psychodophagus. But for Leishmania Donovani complex, it includes Lutsumia sandfly and your Plebotimus sandfly. Okay, please take note of the reservoir host of each subspecies of Leishmania Donovani. Screening test for Leishmania Donovani or visceral Leishmaniasis or causative agent of old world and new world Leishmaniasis includes Montenegro skin test. Montenegro skin test is similar to that of tuberculosis skin test or TB. Its reliability is detecting in detecting the exposure of the organism or exposure to the organism causing Leishmaniasis is relative to the patient's disease status. It is not good method for diagnosing active diseases just for screening. If we are going to collect sample and the sample must be biopsy from infected ulcers, blood, or even lymph nodes biopsy or lymph node biopsy, it is nice to know that we have to see you know, the presence of our amastigote as a mastigote is the correct demo, uh, ayan, correct ka dyan. Ang, ang sagot ay the morphological form of the parasite that is seen in clinical sample in cases of Leishmaniasis. Other samples including blood no, uh, and culture to show the presence of promastigotes. Bone marrow and other tissues is possible. Serological test are also possible. Now, for the life cycle of Leishmania donovani, it is almost synonymous to the life cycle of Brasiliensis with only two exceptions. Number one, yung pong ating Brasiliensis invades the reticuloendothelial cells. No? Reticuloendothelial cells causing uh, mucocutaneous lesions. Okay. And for for Donovan, uh, for Donovani, yes, they invade the visceral tissues. Kaya nga sabi natin sa kanya, positive agent of visceral leishmaniasis. And the other difference in the life cycle will of course is the vector. Correct. Okay, so the uh, uh, geographic distribution depends on the Subspecies. But for your information, in India, Pakistan, parts of Africa, China, Mediterranean areas, former Soviet Union, Central and South America, and Middle East are the areas wherein this parasite is endemic. Okay, so let's discuss visceral leishmaniasis, visceral leishmaniasis is a non-descriptive abdominal illness and since it includes visceral tissues, there can be a hepatomegaly, enlargement of the, of the liver, diarrhea, anemia, no? because of the problem in the liver, may, and may progress to kidney damage. And there is also what we call the darkening of the skin. And 
remember guys then no remember also that Leishmania Donovani is the causative agent of black fever. Gusto ko maliwanag ngayon pa lang na black fever is different from black water fever. Black fever is for Leishmania Donovani. Black water fever is for Plasmodium falciparum. Okay? Plasmodium falciparum. Chronic cases is possible and death can occur in one to two years. Okay. Acute illness na deblates the patient and becomes lethal only in a week. Treatment is also synonymous as the treatment for Donovani. Uh, for what you call this? Brasiliensis. Okay. So the same thing goes with the prevention and control. Now, moving forward to Leishmania Mexicana complex, which is the causative agent of New World cutaneous Leishmaniasis. Okay? So, so sub, the subspecies of Leishmania Mexicana complex includes Mexicana, Pifanoi, Amanuz, uh, Amazonensis, Garmani, Garhami, and Venezuelensis. Okay? Luzumia sunfly is the only vector of this Leishmania mexicana complex across all subspecies. Again, definitely the life uh, the, the diagnosis includes the demonstration of a mastigoat from the lesions. No? And this is what I'm telling culture on, on NNN. Novi Macnil Nicole Agar or Novi Macnil Nicole Media for the demonstration of promastigo. Okay, so the same life cycle with the only difference in the vector, which is Lutzumia. Sir, I have a question. Is it possible that there will be a multiple infection since Lutzumia is a vector of almost all Leishmaniasis? Possible naman. No, possible. Pero rare instances. Maliwanag, possible na magkameron ng mixed infection but rare instances or in rare cases. A new world cutaneous leishmaniasis is characterized with a red small papule occurs at the bite site often with pruritus. Pruritus is itching. Spontaneous healing does not occur due to hypersensitivity immunologic responses. So the same a prevention and control. And lastly, we have your Leishmania Mexicana complex, or Leishmania Tropica, I'm sorry. Leishmania Tropica complex, which is the causative agent of old world cutaneous Leishmaniasis. And the subspecies of Leishmania Mexicana complex includes Leishmania atopica, Leishmania major, and Leishmania tropica. And this time, the vector is Phlebotimus sunfly. Laboratory diagnosis again includes the aspiration of the biopsy for the demonstration of a mastigote. Serological test is also possible. No? Uh, the same life cycle with our resiliencies. They have the same life cycle. They only differ in the cells being invaded and the vector the 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 cells being invaded by this parasite is the human lymphoid tissue of the skin okay so we have here your uh, old world cutaneous leishmaniasis no caused by leishmania tropica uh, this is also characterized by a small red papule occurring at the red at the bite site okay and often with intense itching. Incubation period differs from the subspecies. So on the next slide, I'm going to show to you the incubation period of these parasites. Okay? Sometimes self-healing does not occur because of the thick plaques of the skin 
along with multiple lesions and nodules. So as you can see in the screen, that is a lesion characterized by tri, uh, tri, uh, tri, uh, ang dito? old world cutaneous leishmaniasis caused by leishmania tropica. Like what I've said, these are the incubation period for leishmania eutopica, two months to three years. So, lakang nararamdaman. Then suddenly, bigla na lang lalabas doon yung signs and symptoms or clinical symptoms. Leishmania major incubation period is as little as two weeks. And for leishmania tropica, two months to three years also. Okay. So, the, the medication or the treatment includes sodium uh Stipogluconate, or the brand name is the pentostam, steroids, application of heat of the infected lesions, uh, meglumine, antionate, no? glucantamine, and pentiodamine. Okay, so Leishmania tropical complex, prevention and control is, of course, eradication of the sand fly. Moving forward to Tryponosoma species, no, uh, we can trace back the history of Tryponosoma species way, way back to ancient papyri time. Okay? Wherein they believe that Tryponosomiasis is a condition characterized by uh, a parasite no? caused by Tryponosoma. And they believed that trypanosomiasis is a condition ng mga uh, animals, cattle. It originates sa mga cattle. Okay? In 1895, David Bruce, a Scottish pathologist, identified trypanosoma brucei as the causative agent of nagana and sleeping sickness. Okay, so let's start with Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense. Uh, Gambiense pala muna. Sorry. Okay, so we have here your Trypanosoma brucei gambiense. Okay, and the laboratory diagnosis for Trypanosoma brucei gambiense includes a blood lymph node aspirations or even the use of CSF is possible. Gem sustained preparation is useful for the demonstration of tripomastigo. Like what I've said a while ago, in Leishmania, the, the diagnostic stage or the morphological stage, that is, diag uh, that is the diagnostic stage, is the amastigo. Now, in cases of tripanosomiasis, no, the morphological form is no other than our tripomastigotes. IgM testing can only be used for CSF and serum. Definitely, serological test is also available. Now, how about for the life cycle? Now, take note, guys, that the life cycle of this sleeping sickness includes the vectors, glucina palpalis, and glucina tachinoides. Okay? The life cycle includes the vectors, glucina palpalis, and glucina tachinoides. Again, like what I've said a while ago, meron na naman po tayo dito mga dalawang insect bite. No? And because insect bite is the most common mode of the transmission of the parasite. Okay. So, where are we going to start? In the insect bite here or... Nasaan yung isang insect bite? Itong insect bite na ito. Aling kaya po dito ang mauna? Okay, remember, no? oh, ito na lang mahalagang tandaan natin. Remember that glucina palpalis and glucina tachinoides are both no, the, the, the vectors of this parasite that is capable of transmitting the parasite from an infected to a healthy individual. So let's start our discussion. Okay. This infected human, no, this infected human will be, oh, no, 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 this insect, no, itong si Glucina palpalis, Glucina palpalis, at saka itong si Glucina, 
will perform or will do insect bite. No? Will do an insect bite. So, nakakuha siya ng blood from an infected human. Okay? Nakakuha siya ng blood from an infected human. Therefore, no? Dito sa insect, ito yung mangyayari. Trypomastigot will multiply and along with that, there will be a conversion back to epimastigot. And then, it will uh, migrate back to the salivary gland where the trypomastigot will be deposited. I'm sorry. The trypomastigot of, Lishma, of this tryponosoma uh, brucey no? will be uh, on the salivary gland. And then, it will go, it will have again another insect bite. Itong insect bite nito is to healthy individual. Okay? Is to healthy individual. Depositing the trypomastigot to this infected, uh, to this newly infected human. Wherein it will allow the entry of trypomastigot into the circulation thus migration is now possible after the migration of the trypomastigot it will migrate no into the blood and lymphatics where it will reside thus no and since dun siya magre-reside therefore meron tayong mga multiplication na magaganap through binary fission so that is the simple life cycle of trypanosomiasis. Now, let's make it more detailed. Okay? So the 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 flies, the Glossina palpalis and the Glossina tachinoides, no, will perform an insect bite. Okay? Again, the life cycle is divided into two. One for mammalian stages in humans, and the other one is in the tsetse fly, or kay palpalis at saka kay tachinoides. So from an infected one going to the newly infected person, ganito yung nangyayari. Uh, tripomastigot, no, the, the, the metacyclic tripomastigot will be injected to the human, wherein the injected meta cyclic trypomastigot transforms into the bloodstream no which are carried to the other sites no that trypomastigot will multiply via binary fission in various body fluids including the blood lymph nodes and spinal fluid now remember guys that cattle is the reservoir host no reservoir host of trypanosoma brucei Prodesiense. Okay. After the multiplication and invasion of different body fluids, now the circulating trypomastigot in the body can cause acute infection. Tapos, kapag tong chechefly naman ay nag-ingest ng blood from an infected individual, this phase occurs by chechefly. Okay, so the chechefly fly takes a blood meal, no? Acquiring the trypomastigot. And then the trypomastigot in the bloodstream of the cheche fly transform into the pro procyclic trypomastigot. Going to the procyclic trypomastigot leaves the gut of the uh, cheche fly that will be transported back to the salivary gland, which is the metacyclic trypomastigot that is ready to be deposited in another human species. Basically, guys, this is the life cycle for both Trypanosoma brucei gambiense and Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense. Take note that this, uh, that this parasite is a causative agent of what we call the West African sleeping sickness, no? or also known as the Gambian sleeping sickness. This is, a, this is characterized by a painful chunker surrounded with a white halo at the site of insect bite. 
A patient with West African sleeping sickness can experience fever, malice, headache, weakness, anorexia, lymphadenopathy. Why? Why there is what we call lymphadenopathy? Because of the involvement of the lymph nodes. A patient with West African sleeping sickness is also characterized with the enlargement of the cervical lymph nodes, and that is what we call the winter bottom sign. There is also erythematous red visions or rashes characterized by, the, characterized by local edema and pruritus. Grandal sign is also characterized in a patient with West African sleeping sickness which is a delayed sensation to pain. Sana all, hindi nararamdaman ang sakit. Kung manaramdaman man huli. No? Getting aside, CNS infection is also possible. When CNS is involved, take note guys, that when CNS is involved, the patient may experience tremors, meningoencephalitis, somnolence. Ano yung somnolence? Ito yung ginagawa nyo. Natulog lang ng tulog. Excessive sleep, sleepness. Okay? And uh, CNS involvement is also characterized with changes in the character or sometimes can lead into mental retardation. Remember guys, that West African sleeping sickness can also cause coma or death. Now, take note that this can last for several years. Nakagat pa lang ng chetche fly na comatose ka for several years. Ayan. Naririto pala. Pinagsasasabi ko pa kanina. <laughs> okay. So, for the treatment of choice, it includes milarsoprol, sumarin, pentamidine, and eflormitin. No? However, care must be taken when selecting the, um, the appropriate antiparasitic medication. Why? Because of high toxicity level or high toxicity that is associated with the treatment that can lead into a adverse effect or high toxicity levels. Prevention and control will, of course, destruction of the Cheche fly breeding fly areas. Okay? Remember, guys, that Trypanosoma brucei gambiense is the causative agent of West African sleeping sickness or the Gambian sleeping sickness. Okay, on the other hand, we have your Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense. Okay, so basically the same morphological form for the detection, the trypomastigote, and the almost the same sample for the laboratory diagnosis. For the life cycle, it's also similar, similar with the only exemption with its uh, vector. The vector of Trypanosoma brucei gambien, uh, Trypanosoma brucei prodesiense includes Glucina morsitans and Glucina pal pal palipides. No? Si Pachinoides at saka si Palpalis ay kay gambiense. Morsitans and palipides is for prodesiense. Epidemiology is in East African and Central Africa. That's why it is the causative agent of East Africa sleeping sickness. It is the causative, uh, yeah, the causative agent of East African sleeping sickness, and the reservoir host includes the cattle, the sheep, and the wild game animals. So again, this is the life cycle that is synonymous to our West African sleeping sickness. Okay? Rhodesian sleeping sickness or the East African sleeping sickness is known to have a short incubation period. Now, this is an acute disease or acute disease of East African sleeping sickness is characterized with fever, malice, or rigors. No? And there is also weight loss. PNS involvement in early state of diseases, mental disturbance, liturgy, and anorexia. Kidney damage is also possible, myocarditis, as well as to uh, rapid fulminating diseases. Now take note, guys, that East African sleeping sickness 
can contribute to the death between or within nine to twelve months if the patient is untreated. Okay, in a span of one year, pwede pong mamatay. Yun yung masakit dito eh. Bakit? Na mamatay hindi. Na matay ni minsan na walang signs and symptoms, walang manifestations. Walang manifestations masyado. Okay? Uh, Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense is identical, no? Yung treatment niya is identical to gambiense as well as the prevention and control. Now, for Trypanosoma cruzi, no? Uh, Trypanosoma cruzi is somehow different from Trypanosoma brucei gambiense and Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense. Bakit? There are two uh, conditions for the laboratory diagnosis. Yung dalawa, demonstration of trypomastigote. This time, demonstration of trypomastigote in the blood and demonstration of amastigotes in tissue samples or even in cultures of blood. Another difference of trypanosoma cruzi is the vector. Si trypanosoma, uh, si trypanosoma cruzi, ang vector niya si, no? Reduvid bug. Ayan. Si Reduvid bug or si Tritomine bug takes blood meal. So basically, the same thing. Dalawa na naman yung nangyayari. Yung isa sa tao at yung isa sa parasite. Okay? So once that this Reduvid bug takes a blood meal or sometimes hindi sila nagbablood meal eh. Yung defecate lang nila. Yung, mga, yung pag sila nagdefecate. Yung kanilang mga stool lang minsan. Okay? So the tritomine, the tritomine bug takes a blood meal wherein it will possess metacyclic tripomastigote in the feces. Okay? Tripomastigote enter blood or enter bite wounds or mucosal, uh, mucosal membranes such as the conjunctiva. Therefore, the metacyclic tripomastigote penetrates various cells at the bite site and cell Inside cells, they transform back to amastigot. Kaya pag nandun na sila sa tissues, ano yung recommended, ano yung dapat nating makita? Yung kanilang amastigot. Okay? Then after that, intracellular amastigot transform into a tripomastigot which can go back to other cells to invade or to be aspirated or ingested by our reduvid bug. So sa reduvid bug naman, ano yung nangyayari? Okay. Sa reduvid bug, ano yung nangyayari? No, after the blood meal, no, the epimastigote will transform back or will, will go to the mid-gut and then multiply in the gut and epimastigote will transform into what we call tripomastigote that will be in the uh, that will be ready for the for invading other cells from the other uh, host. Okay. Infected areas of Trypanosoma cruzi are heart, brain, and tissues. That's why uh, this is this is characterized or this is associated sa, an, sa uh, problem in the heart. Okay. Other modes of transmission of trypanosoma cruzi includes blood transfusions. Bakit? Why blood transfusions is possible? These are, di ba, in-screen naman ang ating mga blood before i-process. Yes, tama. Ini-screen yung blood before i-process. But since the routine screening of blood does not include uh, the presence of trypanosoma, bruce, uh, trypanosoma cruzi, that's why blood transfusion is also possible. Sexual intercourse or transplacental and even mucous membranes are also the other modes of transmission. Like what I've said, you know, it was first isolated into a reduvid bug you know, or a kissing bug. You know, and that was isolated from Pastrongulus medicitus, megistus. Panstrongulus megistus. So, ibig sabihin, uh, ano talaga ito eh? Zoonotic disease. Sakit talaga ito ng mga uh, individual, anong uh, mga insect. Okay? 
this is a condition of the insect na napa, napasa sa mga tao po. Okay? So vectors are kissing bug, canonist uh, bug, and tritomid bug. Reserve host are dogs and cats. All right. So Trypanosoma cruzi is associated in Central and South America. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya ano? American trypanosomiasis. Yung isa, West African, ito naman is uh, West African and East African. This time, we have your American trypanosomiasis. Now, uh, tri trypanosoma cruzi is associated into what we call Chagas disease. Chagas disease is characterized by erythematosus nodules or what we call Chagoma. No? Okay, that is usually seen in the insect site or infection site. Ano insect site? Infection site. So, sino ba yan lalaking yan? Siya si Carlos Chagas. Carlos Chagas is a student that time. No? Studente pa lang siya that time nung na-discover na ang Trypanosoma cruzi. That's why ipinangalan sa kanya yung sakit associated sa Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi or uh, the causative agent of American trypanosomiasis or the Chagas disease. Like what I've said, this is characterized with erythematosus nodules or Chagoma. Okay? At infection site. No, edema rush around the eyes and conjunctivitis. And that is what we call Romania's sign. Okay? Chronic Chagas disease includes the involvement of the heart, wherein there is what we call myocarditis, which is the enlargement of the uh, heart, no? or infection in the heart, enlargement of the colon or megacolon and esophagus, or mega mega is esophagus is possible hepatosplenomegaly cns involvement and cardiomegaly and even brain damage is possible that can lead into that acute chagas disease is characterized with fever chills fatigue malgia and malice there are three possible outcomes of acute chagas disease number 1 okay number 1 is uh, recovery, suerte. Number two is transmission to chronic stage, malas. And number three, death after a few weeks after the attack. Sobrang malas. Okay? So, meron lang tatlong, ano lang, tatlong possible mangyari sa'yo. Gumaling, lumala, at mamatay. Now, what are the treatment? The treatment includes uh, lumpit or Nifortimox. No alternatives such as benzimidazole, oloprinol, I'm sorry, aloprinol and ketoconazole are the drug of choice for trypanosoma cruzi. Prevention and control definitely is eradication of uh, kissing bug and then education program that cover disease and disease signs and symptoms, disease transmission, and possible reservoir host. And lastly, we have your trypanosoma rangeli. No? And the, the laboratory diagnosis of this one is blood. Okay? Blood showing the trypomastigot. So, ibig sabihin, trypanosoma brucey gambiense, trypanosoma brucey rodiense, and trypanosoma cruzi uh, rangeli, no? sila ay ano, trypomastigot. Si Trypanosoma cruzi sa blood, Trypomastigot, sa tissue ay sa amastigot. Okay? So the life cycle of Trypanosoma rangeli is almost synonymous to do Trypanosoma cruzi with only two exemptions. What are those? The, um, the species of the reduvid bug because the positive agent or the vector rather of Trypanosoma rangeli is rodius Prolixus. Okay? Rodius prolixus. So magandang pangalan sa COD. No? Para hindi ka malaman na ikaw yun. And vector transmit parasites via its saliva. Si, Rang si Rangeli saliva 
si Cruz ay feces. Okay? So Central and South America also, number of known reservoir host, and then clinical symptoms, usually asymptomatic, but considered a benign infection. So almost similar with the treatment and prevention and control. Thank you very much, future RMTs, and I hope you'll understand chemoflagellates. Let's see each other in our synchronous class for brainstorming activities. Thank you and God bless you all.